Hey guys, Jeff from Home Renovision here. Today I'm here to talk to you about bathrooms, specifically your toilets. Um, I, you know, I go through my comment section a lot and I love to read all your questions and concerns because they give me ideas for, you know what, there's a great idea for a concept of video. So today's video is actually to answer a bunch of questions around toilets. So if you own a toilet or you plan on using one in the future, you're going to want to watch this video to understand all the different problems you're going to run into as a homeowner and your options to fix it because not every time that you're going to find water or a leak or a problem surrounding your toilet, it doesn't necessarily mean there's a disaster. Sometimes it just means you need a little bit of maintenance. So we're going to separate the difference between when you're in real trouble and when you just need to update some of your plumbing equipment. So before we get into the toilet issue itself, I want to deal with the number one cause of water dripping around your toilet, and that is the shutoff valve. And here's why. So I've got three different options on my table here today. Truth is, there are a bunch more, different combinations of it. This is what we would call an, a 90 degree angle. And the idea of this is the water supply is coming out of the wall, and then it goes up to go to the toilet, okay? Here's an example of a straight valve. The idea here is the water supply is coming through the floor and then going to the toilet. Here's another example. It's a straight valve as well, but it's different. And we're going to go through all the differences and things you need to know. They make shutoff valves for a combination of all the different materials that are used to make the connections. All right. So they make it so that you have water supply for, through PEX and it's barbed like that. So you slide the PEX over top and put on a crimp ring. And then on the top, there's three eighths outside diameter threaded. The purpose of this is that if you want to go to the store and buy like the flexible braided line, that's the size that this connects to, 3 8 OD, okay? So when you're shopping, you can get your half inch pecs to a 3 8 OD and that's how you would assemble your toilet. Now, if you don't want to go with a flexible line and you want to buy one of those gray pieces of plastic to go to, direct to the toilet, you can. And what you do is you would slide that plastic on there into that hole. You slide this over top and then you actually would make a compression fitting right here. That's uncommon. Almost every homeowner I've ever known wants to use a braided faucet line because it's simple and it gives you lots of flexibility. If you're going to start using those plastic pipes, yes, they're cheaper, but you've got to be exact and you've got to be a lot more confident with what you're doing. Now, this one is designed so you can actually have a half inch solder joint inside. They've also got this whole array of fittings here, so you can put that over top. Okay, all right. The point is, is you want to read on your package because it'll tell you what's what's what the intake is and what the out, outside is. Now be careful when you're buying your shutoff valve because they also make these same valves for things like refrigerators, and that's different. They actually have quarter inch, not three eighths, coming out the other end. Okay, so make sure you're buying the right product for you. Now you can buy all these with, with angles as well. This one is a 100% solder. And again, it has the 3 8 Now here's where this is different. This is a mini ball valve. And it's a quarter turn that's currently closed. You see the little ball? And now the ball is open. There is no gasket inside of this one. Okay? Now when you're using this without a gasket and you want to do your soldering, no problem. You stick it on your pipe, you scratch it up, you put some flux, you solder your joint. Nothing special. You don't have to do any extra work, okay? There's nothing in here that's going to get destroyed. But if you're going to solder with this kind of gasket, first thing you got to do is you got to get rid of the gasket. And that's going to require a couple of wrenches, okay? And you take off this and it all unthreads, and there's the gasket. If you try soldering while that gasket's installed, it'll melt, and your toilet will forever drip. <laughs> all right, now, let's just leave that open there. Let's take a look at this one as well, see if it's exactly the same. There we go. Again, look at the difference. There, it's the same kind of gasket, it's just a different intakes, but this one shows really well. If you want to see what's going on here, I'll just open this handle, take the set screw out of the, the plastic cap handle. Now that's got a threaded ring on it for the handle. And if your toilet has a broken handle or has an old tin and it's all rusted and sharp, 
use pliers to take it off. You can go to the hardware store and buy just a handle. And they're replacement parts, all right? And they work great. You wanna have a handle that you can actually use in case of emergency, all right? Trust me, you don't want an old sharp metal piece of tin sitting there because if your toilet cracks and water starts to leak, you wanna be able to shut that off in a heartbeat. Now watch this. This kind of valve has two gaskets. When you put this in, all right, this gasket keeps the water from leaking at this point, okay? And the gasket inside keeps water from traveling through the pipe in the closed position. But in the open position is where it usually sits, all right? And when it's open like that, the only, when it's open inside, inside the pipe, okay, this one's being used all the time and this one isn't, all right? So what happens is after a long time, you'll go and you'll go to close your valve and you're going to do some repairs and you'll find that the gasket isn't working anymore. And so even when you got this shut off all the way on, you're going to have water kind of dripping up and dripping out, okay? It'll drive you crazy. So while the water is dripping, you got two options. You can go down and shut off the main, the main supply to the house, or you can actually go out and buy a 3 8 OD brass cap. Okay, so you can take your, your water supply off and you can actually Teflon tape or use a little paste and you can put a cap right on there. Now, if you have got an old shutoff valve and it's leaking, all right, and it's soldered in, and it's leaking from the handle, or when, you, when, you, when, you've, when you've turned it off and you've replaced your hose, it's still leaking, you turn the water supply off, you don't have to go to the store and buy a shutoff valve and then re-solder it. All you do is you buy the shutoff valve, you take the handle assembly out, and you swap it into the old valve. They still are the same size, okay? That'll save your bacon, because if you've got an old solder, soldered line, all you gotta do is just replace the handle assembly, and they're, they're like almost 100% universal. That'll save you a ton of time and aggravation, and you don't need to worry about if you have soldering skills, all right? So you can just change the interior part of the valve. Here we go. Like I said, so with this kind, there's no gaskets. With this kind, there are gaskets, and you can actually go to the store, and you can buy replacement gaskets, okay? And they just stick right on there. That's an option as well. Once you've got the handle off, this gasket can also be replaced, all right? There's lots of options. One of the coolest things about plumbing is that everything has got the ability to have maintenance. Like these pieces of solid brass will last a thousand years. They're not going anywhere. It's the gaskets and the handles that are the problem. That's the weak spot in the whole fitting. And as long as you understand that, if you run into trouble, you're good to go. Renovation tip. Your plumbing is coming out of a wall, let's say, right? And you've gutted your bathroom and you want to keep that plumbing intact because let's say it's a, it's a, it's a soldered system like this one, okay? So I got plumbing sticking out of the wall. I ripped all the drywall off and now I want to put new drywall back on again. Well, now you need this huge hole, right? But if you turn off the water, take your wrench to it and take out this handle assembly with the washer, now your hole is only this wide. And if you cut the hole in the drywall that round, you can slide it right over top of an existing fitting. And then afterwards, okay, you, they have a, um, it's called a split pipe flange, all right? And it's a little piece of metal tin and you buy it in, and you just twist it open and you snap it around your pipe afterwards to cover your hole, all right? That'll save your bacon as well. And it, the most common leak in a toilet is actually around the gasket because most people don't install the toilet properly, all right? So if you have dirty water coming through the ceiling downstairs, that's when you know your gas is leaking. But if you have water on the floor, chances are it's not the gasket because the gasket not installed properly usually causes water to go through the floor. If you have water around your toilet, there's a couple places I need you to check. First, check right here where this is. Make sure that this washer is working, okay? Check the connection on your PEX ring. And all you do is just take a paper towel and wipe it off, give it 30 seconds, and just touch it again and see if it gets wet, all right? Check your connection here, because these flexible hoses also have gaskets, and gaskets can run into trouble over time. 
A lot of people have a tendency when they're putting on their gaskets, they over tighten, okay? Go hand tight and then just gentle pressure, okay? And as long as the gasket is engaged with the metal, it works. As soon as you start over tightening, it starts breaking down prematurely. Next thing you want to check is the toilet tank to the bowl. There are two bolts there, okay? And there are plenty of occasions where that sits nice and everything's working fine. And then one day somebody will just sit down and lean too hard on the tank and kind of twist things up a little bit and break the seal. And you might need to stick a big screwdriver in the tank and tighten those connections up again as well. All right, now you might also have a problem like I did. I bought a toilet and it was shipped here. Uh, it was on internet purchase. And when the toilet got here, the tank had a hairline crack in it, right? That's crazy, but this is what happened. So we actually repaired it with some waterproofing tape. <laughs> Just because we're too busy. And one of these days we'll get around to replacing that toilet. But for the meantime, the waterproofing tape worked great. And if you find yourself in a situation where your toilet's got a leak in the tank or the bowl and you want to just a temporary fix, you can do just like I did and use the waterproofing tape. The stuff actually worked amazing. We used it inside and outside the tank and then filled it back up again. It's been like that for a year, no issues. Now listen, there's a lot of information out there and a lot of different products that you've probably never used before if you're not, you know, if you haven't done a major renovation before. So if you have questions, ask them in the comment section and I'll be able to take all that information and be able to put videos like this together for you. But if you're in a desperate situation and you need questions now, then feel free to join our membership program. Hit the join button. We're in for, I think, $4.99 or five bucks a month. You can become part of the membership and you get access to our email. And I know, guys, the email is found on the community page of the home page on channel. All right, just go to the community tab and in the community tab, there'll be a members only post. So once you're signed up, you'll get access to that all of our members now, we've got a new, a big change to the membership program. Now we have our online members forum. I'm very excited about this, okay? So guys, once you become a member, you can jump in the forum, you can be able to chat with other members. And if you are a member and you've had experience and you can solve someone's question, then jump in, get to know each other on there. I think that'll be a lot of help, get to know each other in your neighborhood, in your community, change tools, give each other help on the weekends. Anyway, if this kind of information is interesting to you, then you might want to check out this list up here. It's a playlist of all of our bench series. Just times when I get a chance to sit down and talk about different things that you might not have had a chance to experience yourself and bring a little bit of perspective to the situation. Remember, water is only dangerous if you let it continue to leak. But you can find it and fix it. It's not hard and you can do it yourself.